Hi there, Ken and Danny here and this is the episode about hydroforming. What hydroforming is and how does it affect us riders using our aluminum or steel bikes? Just so that we have a clue what this technology is all about and why do we pay so much more for the hydroformed uh, frames uh, in nowadays, let's just compare two frames. A fully hydroformed and no hydroforming at all. These are two Cannondales. Uh, these are my beloved uh, mountain Cannondale Killer V900 from 1998. There was no hydroforming uh, in cycling uh, back then and we have fully hydroformed Cannondale Cat 10 awesome uh, racing uh, machine. Cannondale calls it even a smart front frame but we'll just uh, talk about it in a minute. Uh, can you see any difference in the shaping of those, those tubes? Let's just take a closer look. What would you say about the differences between the head tubes in this, this Cannondale Cat 10 and the Killer E? What about the top tube? Let's look at this frame. As you can see, this is just one tube, right? And the shape from the beginning to the end is just the same. It's same with this one. It was just cut here and then weld it to, to the other one. This tube is just the same from the beginning to the end. Maybe you would say, all right, what about this uh, rear triangle? Uh, this was no hydroforming, this was some mechanical shaping uh, most likely. This tube has same uh, shape from the beginning to the end and this band was just uh, made mechanically. So one of the best things that manufacturers could do with those frames uh, back in those days uh, they could be making some budding, um, meaning that they would try to change the thickness of the walls in different areas of the frame. Uh, but as you can see, the shape from the beginning to the end is same. So there was no hydroforming, there was some mechanical uh, shaping and just welding. And now when we look at some high-end frame from 2015 Cannondale Cut 10, we can see some crazy shaping. Actually, there, there is no same shapes on the tubes at the beginning and, and at the end. Uh, perhaps you don't see it even very well, but uh, the shape of this uh, tube is different here and different here. For example, here in the middle, in order to give our legs, our knees a little bit more space, there is some flattened area here. And then here in the back, as you can see, uh, the, the shape is no longer so oval, it's quite flat and then it it connects to the other uh, tubes. And then same with the seat tube. It does seem to be just same from the beginning to the end, but no, we can see some triangle at the end. It's called delta seat tube, so all this shaping is made by hydroforming. Also here, uh, the tube here is quite, I would say maybe even round, not oval, but round. But then here, in order to absorb some vibration, it's quite flat and you can actually see how the frame is uh, working. Let's just look at the chain stays. Completely different shapes from the beginning to the end. Here, the shaping makes a uh, strong connection to the bottom bracket. Here in the middle, it, it does give us some uh, vibration uh, absorption. And again, it has different shape here at the end. Now let's look at the connection between this main tube and the head tube. As you can see, the shape of this tube here is completely different. It's much wider here in order to give us a very strong connection uh, between the head tube and this um, down tube, this main tube, uh, very oversized. And this great shaping just wouldn't be possible if there was no hydroforming. And the head tube itself is as well hydroform. We can see different shaping where the bearings are. There is also different uh, size of the upper and lower bearing. So there has been some shaping going on here. And how is this crazy shaping being done? For example, this tube would be put into a chamber. The chamber has already some shape that we want to have in, on our frame. Uh, it's just closed and then there is a oil under high pressure pumped into the into our uh, tube and the oil presses against this, the walls of the tube and then the tube is being shaped 
according to the shape of the chamber. Easy peasy and it's being done with our cars, the bodies of our cars are being also shaped by hydroforming. And the problem for bike manufacturers today is not the access to the hydroforming because everyone has the access to this technology. Uh, but the question is how to design the frame, how to make those shapes, what kind of shapes and where do we need. So hydroforming gives uh, the bike manufacturers a great possibility of shaping those tubes, uh, taking each gram from the section where we don't need it and put them just uh, where we need. And just as an example, this frame in uh, size 56 weighs around 1150 grams, which is just super cool. Uh, the frame is uh, very light, this, the frame is super stiff just where it should be and it absorbs some, vibra some vibrations, um, makes me feel comfortable after a hundred kilometers of riding. Alright, this is what I wanted to tell you about hydroforming. You will see now a lot of differences between the old-fashioned uh, frames and those that I hydroformed today. And this is no marketing stuff, this is a, a real improvement and I'm very happy to ride this hydroformed uh, frame that is so light and so comfortable. So next time when you'll be looking at some cool aluminum or steel frame, uh, just remember that those beautiful shaping have been done by hydroforming. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.